Hi everyone, we are on page 239 of Wonder and the chapter is called School. I hardly saw Via at school this year, and when I did, it was awkward. I felt like she was judging me. I knew she didn't like my new look. I knew she didn't like my group of friends. I didn't much like hers. Now remember, this is Miranda talking. We are on her section of the book, so just so you know, that's where we are. We never actually argued. We just drifted away. Ella and I badmouthed her to each other. She's such a prude. She's so this. She's so that. We knew we were being mean, but it was easier to ice her out if we pretended she had done something to us. The truth is, she hadn't changed at all. We had. We'd become these other people, and she was still the person she'd always been. That annoyed me so much, and I didn't know why. Once in a while, I'd look to see where she was sitting in the lunchroom or check the elective list to see what she'd signed up for. But except for a few nods in the hallway and an occasional hello, we never really spoke to each other. I noticed Justin about halfway through the school year. I hadn't noticed him at all before then, other than that he was he was this skinny, cutish dude with thick glasses and longish hair who carried a violin everywhere. Then one day, I saw him in front of the school with his arm around Via. So, Via has a boyfriend, I said to Ella, kind of mocking. I don't know why it surprised me that she'd have a boyfriend. Out of the three of us, she was totally the prettiest. Blue, blue eyes and long, wavy, dark hair. But she just never acted like she was all that interested in boys. She acted like she was too smart for that kind of stuff. I had a boyfriend too, a guy named Zach. When I told him I was choosing the theater elective, he shook his head and said, careful you don't turn into a drama geek. Not the most sympathetic dude in the world, but very cute. Very high up on the totem pole, a varsity jock. I wasn't planning on taking theater at first. Then I saw Via's name on the sign-up sheet and just wrote my name down on the list. I don't even know why. We managed to avoid one another throughout most of the semester like we didn't even know each other. Then one day I got to theater class a little early and Davenport asked me to run off additional copies of the play he was planning on having us do for the spring production, The Elephant Man. I'd heard about it, but I didn't really know what it was about, so I started skimming through the pages while I was waiting for the Xerox machine. It was about a man who lived more than 100 years ago named John Merrick, who was terribly deformed. We can't do this play, Mr. D, I told him when I got back to class. And I told him why. My little brother has a birth defect, and he has a deformed face, and this play would hit too close to home. He seemed annoyed and a little unsympathetic, but I kind of said that my parents would have a real issue with the school doing this play, so anyway, we ended up switching to our town. I think I went for the role of Emily Gibbs because I knew Via was going for it too. It never occurred to me that I'd beat her for the role. What I miss most. One of the things I miss most about Via's friendship is her family. I loved her mom and dad. They were always so welcoming and nice to me. I knew they loved their kids more than anything. I always felt safe around them, safer than anywhere else in the world. How pathetic that I felt safer in someone else's house than in my own, right? And of course I loved Augie. I was never afraid of him, even when I was little. I had friends that couldn't believe I'd ever go to Via's house. His face, his face creeps me out, they'd say. You're stupid, I'd tell them. Augie's face isn't so bad once you get used to it. I called Via's house once just to say hello to Augie. Maybe part of me was hoping Via would answer, I don't know. Hey, Major Tom, I said, using my nickname for him. Miranda, he sounded so happy to hear my voice, it actually kind of took me by surprise. I'm going to a regular school now, he told me excitedly. Really? Wow, I said, totally shocked. I guess I never thought he'd go to a regular school. His parents have always been so protective of him. I guess I thought he'd always be that little kid in the astronaut helmet I gave him. Talking to him, I could tell he had no idea that Via and I weren't close anymore. It's different in high school, I explained to him. You end up hanging out with loads of different people. I have some friends in my new school, he told me. A kid named Jack and a girl named Summer. That's awesome, Augie, I said. Well, I was just calling to tell you I miss you. 
and I hope you're having a good year. Feel free to call me whenever you want. Okay, Augie? You know I love you always. I love you too, Miranda. Say hi to Via for me. Tell her I miss her. I will. Bye. Bye. Extraordinary, but no one there to see. And this is on page 243. Neither my mother nor my father could come see the play on opening night. My mother, because she had this thing at work, and my dad, because his new wife was going to have her baby any second now, and he had to be on call. Zach couldn't come to opening night either. He had a volleyball game against Collegiate he couldn't miss. In fact, he had wanted me to miss the opening night so I could come cheer him on. My friends all went to the game, of course, because all their boyfriends were playing. Even Ella didn't come. Given a choice, she chose the crowd. So on opening night, no one that was remotely close to me was even there. And the good thing is, I realized in my third or fourth rehearsal that I was good at this acting thing. I felt the part. I understand the words I spoke. I could read the lines as if they were coming from my brain and my heart. And on opening night, I can honestly say I knew I was going to be more than good. I was going to be great. I was going to be extraordinary, but there would be no one there to see. We were all backstage, nervously running through our lines in our heads. I peeked through the curtain at the people taking their seats in the auditorium. That's when I saw Augie walking down the aisle with Isabel and Nate. They took three seats in the fifth row near the middle. Augie was wearing a bow tie, looking around excitedly. He'd grown up a bit since I'd last seen him, almost a year ago. His hair was shorter, and he was wearing some kind of hearing aid now. His face hadn't changed a bit. Davenport was running through some last-minute changes with the set decorator. I saw Justin pacing off stage left, mumbling his lines nervously. Mr. Davenport, I said, surprising myself as I spoke. I'm sorry, but I can't go on tonight. Davenport turned around slowly. What? He said. I'm sorry. Are you kidding? I'm just, I muttered, looking down. I don't feel well. I'm sorry. I, I feel like I'm going to throw up. This was a lie. It's just last minute jitters. No, I can't do it. I'm telling you. Davenport looked furious. Miranda, this is outrageous. I'm sorry. Davenport took a long, deep breath, like he was trying to restrain himself. To be truthful, I thought he looked like he was going to explode. His forehead turned bright pink. Miranda, this is absolutely unacceptable. Now, go take a few deep breaths and I'm not going on, I said loudly and the tears came to my eyes fairly easily. Fine, he screamed, not looking at me and then turned to a kid named David who was the set decorator. Go find Olivia in the lighting booth. Tell her she's filling in for Miranda tonight. What? said David, who wasn't too swift. Go! shouted Davenport in his face. Now! The other kids had caught on to what was happening and gathered around. What's going on? said Justin. Last minute change of plans, said Davenport. Miranda doesn't feel well. I feel sick, I said, trying to sound sick. So why are you still here? Davenport said to me angrily. Stop talking, take off your costume, and give it to Olivia, okay? Come on, everybody, let's go, go, go! I ran backstage to the dressing room as quickly as I could and started peeling off my costume. Two seconds later, there was a knock, and Via half opened the door. What is going on, she said. Hurry up, put it on, I answered, handing her the dress. You're sick? Yeah, hurry up. Via looked stunned, took off her t-shirt and jeans and pulled the long dress over her head. I pulled it down for her and then zipped up the back. Luckily, Emily Webb didn't go on till 10 minutes into the play, so the girl handling hair and makeup had time to put Via's hair up in a twist and do a quick makeup job. I have never seen Via with a lot of makeup on. She looked like a model. I'm not sure I'll even remember my lines, Via said, looking at herself in the mirror. Your lines. You'll do great, I said. She looked at me in the mirror. Why are you doing this, Miranda? Olivia, it was Davenport, hushed shouting from the door. You're on in two minutes. It's now or never. Via followed him out the door, so I never got the chance to answer the question. I don't know what I would have said anyway. I wasn't sure what the answer was. And that's where we're stopping on page 245. See you soon.